Well, good morning. We are going to worship this morning, or at least that's our intention, hopefully. Uh, we're going to start by singing a hymn, a hymn that I really like. So if you guys would stand and sing with us this morning. church you may be seated and welcome home everyone who's glad to be in the house of the lord this morning Amen. all right about half of you are the rest are going to wake up in a minute and join our sanctuary is kind of lopsided we got more on this side now and if we were in kids church i would ask all of you to move to the front few rows but uh, i don't think that'd be very successful or well welcomed by some people in the sanctuary so i'll just let you sit where you want to sit but uh, I'm glad to see all of you this morning. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord and to worship Him this morning. I have a few announcements for you real quick, but make sure we do have bulletins this week. So if you didn't get your bulletin, make sure to snag one on your way out. Uh, but uh, the biggest thing I want to highlight, now that frolic is over, and I'll give you guys a frolic update in a little bit, uh, is our fall fest coming up. And uh, we really need a lot of help with that. Nita is meeting with her committee today to kind of finalize some uh, details and get those all worked out. So if you're going to be getting a phone call this week, you know probably what it's going to be about. Now, that's no excuse to not answer the phone <laughs> when, you, when you see that Nita's calling or I'm calling. Uh, but we, we need everyone to jump on board. This is one of our biggest community outreach. Uh, last year, we estimated over 500 people uh, ended up coming out. And so we had... People parking along the streets and out in the field, and it was just a great turnout. And so we want to be here. Uh, we need everybody here to interact with the community and uh, just kind of be welcoming to them as they come. And for some people, this is our 
this is a one-shot deal where we get a chance to kind of speak into their life and hopefully make some connections there. So make sure you're paying attention to your bulletin. I did talk with a lady here in the church who said she's not been getting the emails. If you are not getting emails every Wednesday, um, if you could let Leah know, and we need to make sure we have your most up-to-date email address and that we have it correctly entered into our uh, e-news. So that way you can get a midweek email has everything you need to know, but then we also use that to send out emails. I sent out an email this last week about Frolic, and so we just want to make sure that we are able to connect with you guys there. You can also see them if you're on Facebook. Uh, whenever I send out an email, uh, you can also view it on there. So if you follow our Facebook page, you can also read it there. So the Fall Fest is the big highlight there. There's other stuff in your bulletin. Make sure you're looking to that. As always, if you have any questions, please, please, please let me or Leah know or Pastor Mark and we'll be happy to answer any questions we can. We do have an announcement for Ladies Ministry. So I'm going to turn it over to Kim. Jim. Hang on, she's not prepared. <laughs> no, that's my fault. I told her we were going to do it later. But uh, when I looked at the bulletin, I only really had one announcement. I needed, we need more filler. Forgive it. <laughs> Forgive it. There you go. Okay. Is it on? Can you hear me? Okay. Ladies Retreat is coming up Friday, October 21st. We spend the night at the, which hotel? I can't remember. Marriott, Wichita Marriott. And then we have the retreat on Friday evening and Saturday morning. It is lots of fun. Speaker this year is Dr. Carolyn Johnson. I not heard of her before. I don't know anything, but all of our speakers have always been really good. So it's a lot of fun. Um, Friday night is $35 if you can only go Friday night. If you can only go Saturday morning, it's $35. But if you can go both days, you get a little discount and 60 bucks. So I need to know, like, the deadline is October the 7th, but I'm doing the registration, so I can cut you a little slack. But you need to let me know if you want to go, which days you want to go, and if you want to spend the night. Um, this year they changed it. We have to make our own reservations for the hotel, so let me know. I'll ask you, do you want to stay the night? Do you want to share a hotel room? And I'm not getting trying to get really personal, but do you mind sharing a bed? with somebody. So that depends on how many we can put in the room. Um, the rooms are running 127.88. So if you get four people in there, you're looking at, you know, 30 bucks, 35, something like that. So anyway, um, I will need a check for this, the retreat itself. If you're going one day, $35, both days, $60 made out to Kansas district women's ministries we'll deal with the hotel thing later okay any questions please just tell me today today would be best you can call me you can text me you can email me whatever get a hold of me and I'll get you in okay it's a lot of fun and I really recommend going okay questions all right am I supposed to do scripture now okay Transition. <coughs> Psalm 96. Thank you, Donna, for suggesting this one. Sing God a brand new song. Earth and everyone in it, sing. Sing to God. Worship God. Shout the news of his victory from sea to sea. Take the news of his glory to the lost. News of his wonders to one and all. For God is great and worth a thousand hallelujahs. His furious beauty puts the other gods to shame, little g-gods. Pagan gods are mere tatters and rags. God made the heavens. Royal splendor radiates from him. A powerful beauty sets him apart. Bravo, God, bravo. Everyone join in the great shout. Encore, in awe before the beauty, in awe before the might. Bring gifts and celebrate, bow before the beauty of God. Then to your knees, 
everyone worship. Les brought up in Sunday school today that when we get to heaven, prayer is, is going to be just talking to God. You know, you're going to be face to face with him. So prayer kind of goes away. Church goes away. Preaching goes away. All that stuff goes away. Worship remains. Worship is the one thing we're practicing here to do up there for eternity. So let's worship. Is am I going to pray? I'm praying? Oh, good. Les is praying. <laughs> All right. I will sit about pray and get started this morning. Uh, our dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for another day, for another opportunity to come to your house to worship you. Thank you for each one that's here. I pray that your Holy Spirit would come would guide our worship. We come with with heavy hearts in a lot of ways, Lord. And I the Holy Spirit is our comforter, is our guide, is our friend that sticks closer than a brother. Thank you, Lord. And I wanna pray for our country. Lord, things seem to be a little a little a little up in the air. And I pray that you would give us as Christians wisdom, guide us as we go to vote, and all that we do, help us to honor you, Lord. And I just want to thank you now for this time, for this worship service. Pray that you'd be with Pastor. Pray that you'd be with our communion time. May we be ready for communion. May our hearts and minds be prepared for what we're about to do. Lord, I pray that you would continue to be with our singing this morning. Help us to enjoy our worship down here so we, we practice for when we get to heaven. Thank you, Lord. I just want to ask this all in your name. Amen. Amen. If you want to stand up, we're going to go through a handful of songs here all at once, hopefully, and <laughs> hang on. <laughs> doing the same thing.
God. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Nita, are the piano keys smoking over there? It's going fast. I think the keyboard keys were smoking up there, too, trying to keep up with the lyrics. Good job, Austin. Way to go. Well, it's time to receive this morning's tithe and offering, so if our ushers would come forward at this time. Pastor Carol, do we have a... A report on the alabaster last week. Would you like to come up and share that uh, after I pray? If you come on up here, and we'll get an update on that, and then we have a video that we're going to show for our special today. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. What a privilege it is to be here, and a privilege to worship you through giving. We ask that a blessing be on this offering and tithe that is received. May it be blessed and multiplied for the building of your kingdom. And together, God's people said, "Amen." Amen. Well, let's hear the good news about the alabaster offering last week. Hey, you all did a great job with the alabaster offering, which is for the, uh, the work of the church internationally in building uh, churches, parsonages, uh, hospital clinics, uh, buying land for the work of the church, and just in uh, collecting change. And uh, some people gave checks or larger bills. We had a total of $465.99. So, great job. A uh, few people told me that they had forgotten their offerings, and so we'll certainly still take that. But thank you all for uh, participating in the work of the church globally. Praise God. That's wonderful news. What a good report. We have a video to show you this morning. We are often told... God loves you. But what does that really mean? That some impersonal force galaxies away may consider you from time to time? Or that you are a single drop in a vast ocean of humanity and God cares for all of it? There are billions of lives, billions of stories. Can we really believe he has great destinies planned for all of them? Surely the ruler of the universe has more important affairs than to notice the needs of one singular individual. But hear this, nothing could be further from the truth. When God says, I love you, it means that he crafted every detail of your being. Your every feature is his perfect design. His mind perceives your worries and your thoughts. His heart is broken by your pain. You are his child, created in his image. Your value exceeds all the riches of earth. Your worth extends beyond the stars. And though you may be unaware, he's carefully constructing the events of your life to build his kingdom. If you are willing, he can and will achieve wonders through your hands. It is the deepest passion, the most meaningful promise. It is your security, your hope, and your future. It is the truth beyond doubt. God loves you. Well, that's great news. Wow. Kids, just a quick update. Today is family worship. We will be getting back to Kids Church next Sunday. But I wanted to come and give you an update on youth ministry and what's happening with inverse worship and the students. A couple weeks ago, we went to see Toby Mack at the fair. That was incredible. The, the fact that Toby Mack is older than me just gives me, like, inspiration. If he can get up there and do that, I've got some, some energy left to, to contribute. Um, but we had a great time. Um, we are preparing the first weekend in November is our district lock-in. So we'll be um, planning for that soon. And right now we are in, the, this Wednesday is the fifth week in our series on 
um, the better life. And we're looking at the fact that there is something better. There's a better way of doing high school and middle school than the way that we do it normally or the, the way that the world does it. And we've been spending um, time looking at Galatians 5.22 and 23, and, and looking at the fruit of the Spirit, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And what does that mean? And how does our lives change when we reflect those fruits? And if we're not reflecting those fruits, what do we need to change inside ourselves in order to allow the Holy Spirit to bear fruit in our life. And we're talking about that it's not just a one-time crisis, but it's a lifelong process of bearing fruit over and over and over. And that just like an orange doesn't appear overnight, it takes a while for fruit to, to, to develop. And we're talking about that we just have to get up every day and depend on the Holy Spirit to get us through that next day and to ask him to show his fruit through our lives. It's another way of looking at that word called sanctification. And we have been exploring it and thinking about it. So pray because the youth have been struggling and been thinking about this. This is probably, I told them Wednesday night, this is the hardest sermon series I've ever done with children or youth. And um, I trust that it will bear fruit in, in our youth. So pray for our youth as we continue to look at the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mark. I, I know on Wednesday nights, uh, our students aren't just getting entertainment. They're not just uh, getting to play gaga ball which I've already tried to explain that to some of you. Some of you are still confused on it. I'm still confused on it. But uh, it's more than just hang out time with friends. Uh, and so pray for our youth. Pray for our leadership. Pray for our youth pastor as he brings the word on Wednesdays. Pray for our small group leaders who are helping with that. Uh, we were going to have the small group leaders come up, but uh, I know one of them's not feeling well, and one of them had other commitments today. They weren't able to be here. But um, there is still always room to get involved. So if you're sitting there wondering, you know, well, what's going on on Wednesday nights? Uh, join in and come and see and connect in with Pastor Mark and the team. Uh, there's no age limit on uh, how old you can be to help out. Um, if Pastor Mark's able to do it, then a lot of you guys are too. He didn't catch the knock on the age. You still got a lot of energy in you, Pastor Mark. So I want to ask uh, our kiddos if they would come on up. We're going to have a kids minute up here. And Miss Amy's going to come up here and help me with this. And I'll have y'all just sit right here, kind of in the middle. Whoa, something grew on your head, man. Whoa, yep. <laughs> just sit right here. Not behind me. Over here. Oh, you want to set that? Okay. That's probably better. That way they get to see your face and not mine. They have to look at it later. There, is that better? Is that all right? All right, very Jeffrey, get up here. So now that it's fall, how many of you guys are so glad that it's fall? Did you know it's, we're starting fall? You did? What's uh, one thing you love about fall? Yeah. Leaves? Leaves? How about you all? All right. Pumpkin pie. I was waiting for somebody to say pumpkin pie. Not having to mow. Yes, I, I know there's a few guys in the church who are excited for that as well. Uh, this is a whole... Austin had his hand up. Well, I'm not talking to him. I'm talking to you guys. So leaves, huh? Uh, another thing I was kind of expecting you guys to say was it's at the end of October... Halloween. That's like you were. You're just a little little late, but that's okay. Halloween. What's your favorite part about Halloween? Candy? Costumes? Costumes? Costumes. All right. Get, how about y'all? Scaring children. 
Is that Dean? Yeah, I figured as much. Well, I want to I wanna talk about costumes. Why do you like costumes so much? Because they're funny and fun. They're funny and fun. Yes, there are some really good funny costumes out there. What else? You can scare people. Okay, you and Dean can go hang out after church today. <laughs> what else? How about when you put that costume on, you get to kind of be something different, right? So do you know what you're going to be for Halloween this year? What are you going to be? A Power Ranger. A Power Ranger. Woo! What, wait, hang on. Important question. What color? Blue. Blue Power Ranger, of course. All right, switching it up. A pirate. And a wolf from Zombies 2. A wolf from Zombies 2. I don't think we know what you're going to be yet. Ah, okay. So we have these costumes that you put on. Now, is the goal that nobody will recognize who you are? Isn't that kind of the fun part of dressing up and putting all these things on is that you kind of get to hide away and, and people don't, can't tell who you are. I remember we were at Fall Fest a few years back and do you all know Samuel Nickel, our administrative assistant's husband? Um, he dressed up to the point where I didn't even recognize him. And I remember doing that with my wife in college that we walked up to the church and we dressed up as an elderly couple. And I had a walker and everything and she had her big handbag and we grayed our hair out. And the youth pastor had run out to the parking lot to make sure that we didn't trip over things, didn't even recognize that it was us. And so uh, that's the fun part of dressing up is that we get to kind of disguise ourselves and people don't know who we are. And we get to be a Power Ranger for the night. And it's so much fun. But I want to tell you guys something. Even though during Halloween we kind of trick people and they don't know who we are because we're trying to be someone else, did you know that God knows who you are and that there's nothing you can do to hide yourself from God? You can put on all these different masks and costumes and try to change, but God knows who you are under all of that. And today we're going to hear a story about Elijah, and we're going to hear about how God had seen Elijah. Even though he tried to hide, God knew who he was where he was. And so Miss Amy's going to share the memory verse with you guys that we've been working on on Wednesday night. So I'm going to turn it over to her and let her talk about that. All right, Skyly, do you happen to remember the memory verse that we've been working on? No? Candace? No, of course not. All right, so our memory verse is Romans 8, 39. And it's neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And some of our other kiddos that come on Wednesday nights, they have all these cool actions or moves for the different parts of the verse. Um, so I wish we had some more here today to share that with you guys. Um, but that's what we've been kind of trying to remember through our um, finding Jesus under the sea is that no matter um, where we go, no matter how far down in the waters the creatures are, God knows that they're there and they, he knows where we are and that he will always love us. So it's been a lot of fun on Wednesday nights with our kingdom kids. The theme, I'm going to talk a little bit, I'm going to share the message that we had on Wednesday but I found this little booger in storage, and I got it to work. Oh, it's so much fun. And so that way, on Wednesday nights, we like to play in the bubbles under the sea. And so thank you guys. Would you give it up for our little kiddos up here as they are such an important part. You guys can go back to your seats now. And I want to invite our praise team to come back up as we continue in our time of worship.
Well, we're going to sing another song. It's a little newer than what we've been. Jesus the Beloved, I don't know if you remember it. I'm sure we've sang it a time or two. So, you know what? Why don't we just sit down? And we'll try to sing this one, see if we can figure it out, if that's all right. Okay, I have to look back at the pianist because she's going to...
fifth Sunday. It's first Sunday. But I also know one of the greatest things we can do in the church is pray for one another. And so I'm going to break off of our normal schedule a little bit here. And I want us to break down into groups in the sanctuary around where you're at. If you can get in groups of five or six or however many you want, it's, it doesn't need to be specific. And if you would just spend time with one another for the next few moments and uh, just kind of listen to one another. Listen to what God's been doing. Listen to how you can pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. And then if one person in that group wouldn't mind leading a time of prayer, and that's how we're going to spend our prayer time this morning. So if you'd go ahead and start getting into groups where you're at, you might have to travel a little bit if you're not sitting close to somebody. But let's gather together as God's family, and let's pray for one another. And then pray, Stephen.
Father, it's so good to be in your house and to be in this time of worship and especially a time where we can share with brothers and sisters the things going on in our life. We know, Heavenly Father, that you know all things. You know what we're going through. You know our struggles. But it helps and the power of prayer is real. And so when we get our brothers and sisters on board with us, praying for us, lifting us up by name, by situation, Father God, there's power in that. And so thank you for the the willingness, the, the openness of this church body to gather in these groups and to open up and to share. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that as these requests have been heard, we know that you're already at work. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your will would be done in all things and that all things that we do will glorify you. So thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day, this time of worship, and this time of prayer. We love you, and together we say, amen. really like that video. It kind of is a good reminder that sometimes we need to be quiet. And uh, this world's not a huge fan of being quiet, is it? It, uh, it really isn't. And so a, a reminder that in the craziness of this life and the things going on, sometimes we really need to be quiet. And that passage we're going to, that was for that video, we're going to read here in just a second. My wife's going to come up and share that with us. Uh, But this has been a really special week for me. Um, It's been a busy week. It's been a crazy week. Yesterday, most of you know, uh, we went to Bueller Frolic, which was uh, just northeast of here. If you don't know where Bueller is, I always like it when people try to pronounce Bueller. It's always funny from out-of-towners when they can't pronounce it. Uh, but uh, Bueller Frolic, a celebration of the end of the harvest, and the community comes together 
and does different things. And we had a food vending stand there. And uh, I wanted to thank a few people who came out to help. Uh, Nita and Ben. Nita's nephew showed up yesterday with her at a little after 7 in the morning uh, to get there and to help get things going and out of the trailer and out of the van and out of the... Because we had three vehicles worth of stuff to unload. And, and so it was just great to have people there. Pastor Carol came. Wayne was there. Wayne surprised us by... Uh, he kind of got roped into it. He was a, a Uber driver for Carol to get her there to the frolic and then uh, ended up sticking around and not just sticking around, but helping out and rolling hot dogs and uh, just a, a good helper there. Uh, Dale and Rosemary. Dale uh, got an extra long spatula so he wouldn't burn his knuckle hairs or arm hairs. Uh, do you still have them today? Your hairs? They're good. They're in good condition. I lost mine because I had a short spatula before he had gotten there. And so I was amazed. People were ready to eat a burger at 10 a.m. That seems a little early for a burger, but, you know, I guess it's the frolic day. You do what you do. Um, Carol Crotz. Carol stayed there a long time, and she was a hard worker. She, Carol's my cleaning lady there. She, uh, she keeps the space tidy and clean and, and gets to cleaning the tables off and stays busy the whole time nonstop. Pastor Mark, he came and kind of helped. It was okay. <laughs> no, you did great. Uh, Jess and Kim Easton, they came and served. Uh, and then not only just did their two-hour time slot and didn't punch out, but they stuck around. They helped load everything up, which was always a big help uh, that we didn't have to do that. And then, of course, my wife, who stayed up all night, Friday night, making donuts and uh, we only sold one case of the Galactic Donuts, but she did a great job making all these delicious homemade donuts. And if you want some, they're in the Fellowship Hall. You can just take them or you can donate money for them, whatever you want. We just don't want them to go to waste, so grab a case of those if you like chocolate donuts. And then my kiddos, um, we started working on this probably Wednesday. I've been working on it before then, but that's when their work started having to help out and move stuff around. And so... Uh, they've been at it this whole week, Austin, Candace, Jeffrey, and Skyly. So we made, uh, we didn't make, we sold over $1,000 worth of um, food. So we had good sales yesterday. Yeah, that's good. Um, and just so people know, like I said, our profits are to help our Doors for Kids campaign. And right now, we are at $4,408 for our Doors for Kids. And so... Um, we're going to just keep chugging along on that as we continue to raise funds. We had a lot of people ask, what are doors for kids? And so we would explain, you know, because we took the ugly door, I call it the ugly door, the old door, out there to the frolic so people could see it and uh, just letting them know that we're trying to update our facilities for kiddos and to get them the best. So another reason this week was extra, oh, wait, wait, before I say anything else, we also had a lot of people donate food and finances. And I want to say that helps tremendously. Uh, when we have donation, money donation, that helps keep our expenses down. And so that $1,000 will be more of what we make solid if we get all of our expenses paid. So thank you for those who gave financially. Uh, your contribution was uh, is very much appreciated. Um, and then those who got food, we had all of our food uh, that I needed signed up for was all signed up for. So thank you, church family, for responding and responding so well. I appreciate that. So the other thing that made this week special is I've been helping up in our Kingdom Kids on Wednesdays uh, the last couple weeks. And so I get to hang out with pre-K through fifth graders on Wednesdays with Miss Nicole and then my wife Amy and kind of seeing what they've been doing lately on Wednesdays, and I have just had a blast. It has rekindled this uh, joy and fire that I find in kids' ministry. Not that I don't enjoy adult ministry. I love this, and it just brings a whole different set of joys um, that I find here in preaching here and working with adult ministry. But uh, kids' ministry is, is different. How many of you have ever worked with kiddos here? At, yeah. And what would you say the number one thing is that makes kids' ministry unique and special? Say it loud, I can't hear. Energy. 
wow, you, did you read, you read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say is energy and enthusiasm. Uh, they, they are so wired up and excited to be at church. And they're so excited and wired up to sing worship songs and, and they get to swaying and moving and not dancing. I want to make sure, not dancing. But they, are, they are worshiping Jesus with their whole bodies and I love the energy that they bring to the room. And uh, it was funny because I've been trying to put together video clips to try to make a a promo so we can show you guys what's happening on Wednesdays. And uh, every time I turn the camera towards Miss Nicole, she stops and steps back and just stares at me like, don't you dare. And so it's just fun to see the excitement and the energy that we have in our volunteers and in our kiddos. And I'm reminded that I love being a kingdom kid. That's what we call our Wednesday nights for, for our kiddos is kingdom kids. And I'm reminded that I myself love being a kingdom kid. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're a kingdom kid too. Yeah, you're a kingdom kid too. And I love that because it kind of reminds me also that I don't have to be so grown up in my worship. That, that it's okay for me to worship a little more energetically, to worship a little more enthusiastically, to maybe every once, we, we saw some of you guys today, that was some good clapping. Let's do more of that. I like, even if it's off beat. Nita, can, you can handle that, can't you? If we, we might speed you up a little bit or slow you down. Don't let us distract you, but, but let's worship energetically and enthusiastically. Well, up there in Kingdom Kids, we're doing a series called Finding Jesus Under the Sea. Uh, it kind of went hand in hand. We did Pirates Who Pray. So I don't know if we're just stuck on an ocean idea or what, but I really enjoy this idea of finding Jesus under the sea. Uh, we have bracelets that we made for kids uh, for a VBS a number of years back, and it says BNC Kids, but on the other side, if you flip it inside out, it says, see God. Just a very simple phrase to remind kids as they look at their wrist bracelet and they're out at Walmart and they see it and it says, see God. They're encouraged to look for examples of where God is everywhere. So I think sometimes we get caught up in, my parents right now are in Colorado, and I, I blocked them on Facebook so I don't have to see any of the pictures or anything. But uh, it's easy when we go to places like Colorado or in the mountains or Arizona or, or to the lake and we can say, wow, God, and we see examples. But but I, the challenging part is that we need to look for God in other places too. And so what we're doing in finding Jesus under the sea is we're tying and looking at all of God's magnificent sea creatures. And we can sit there and, and enjoy the splendor of how God created so beautifully the creatures that we see. And we tie those into different scriptures and help us understand a story related to that sea creature. Well, this week, the creature was a stingray. I got to skip a couple slides. There we go. How many of you have ever been able to see a stingray in real life? Yeah. Yeah, I love stingray. Um, I was able to go with my family and my mom and my dad to the Oklahoma City Zoo, and you can actually pet the stingray. And, uh, you know, my younger kiddos, they don't really like that. They get terrified because they also have baby sharks in there, which might scare some people. But I think it's just remarkable that uh, we can go and we can touch these beautiful creatures, these stingray. Sorry, I've got this nice, beautiful music. You can turn it down a little bit. Don't go to sleep now. This is the kind of music I listen to when I sleep, so nobody, nobody snooze with that beautiful music. But uh, I, I don't know. There might be probably half of you raised your hand that you've seen a stingray in real life. But when you do see one, I promise you, you're not going to forget the, the experience. It's just magnificent. It is glorious. Uh, something about stingrays, they don't have flippers or fins. They have this wide, flat body that you can see on the screen. And they kind of just like, they're like a stealth bomber that just kind of floats around and 
waves their whole body as they move through the water. They flap their ends to propel themselves forwards through the water. And it really looks like they're not swimming, but I think it looks like they're flying. It, it reminds me of like a bird flapping in the water. It's really neat. It's majestic. They have this long tail, and at the end, some of them have a stinger on it, which kind of makes them very dangerous also. But rays are, stingrays are related to sharks, but they're very different than sharks. Sharks just kind of go at their prey and get it. But stingray do something different. They, they hide themselves, they camouflage themselves in the, the base of the seabed, and they kind of contort their bodies to make it look like they're just part of the ocean floor. And then slowly as their prey comes by, they get up and they get them. And so it's just neat to see how they can do that. And, and part of it is that they have to lay very still, almost completely motionless. And when that meal comes along, they get it. They nab it. They're excellent hiders. And they have to be if they really want to eat. That's part of how they were created. Is part of their created order is that they kind of have to hide in order so that they can get their food. But God didn't give us adaptations to hide ourselves. Now, we have made it to where I know in army, we have made these camouflage suits. If you're, if you're a hunter, we've made these outer things you can put on to, to hide yourselves. But naturally in our createdness, the way that God made us, we are not created to be hiding creatures. But I wanna tell you, there's not a single thing that can hide you from God's eyes. We talked about that with the kiddos as we're gearing up for Halloween. And I know a lot of them are excited for costumes and masks and they get to try to be somebody different. But God can see straight through all of that. And in today's Bible story, Amy's going to come up and, and read with you guys here in a second. We're going to see that we meet a man who loved God, but he wanted to get far away and he wanted to hide as best as he could. He was crushed. He was defeated, and he was ready to die. But even in this darkest hour, God was there to meet his needs and to care for his servant. So I want to invite Amy to come up as she reads this morning's scripture with you. And it's not the one that's printed in the bulletin. So those of you who already had your ribbon set, you're going to have to change that. First Kings chapter 19, starting at verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he rose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones, and a jar of water, and he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. 
And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Harab, the mount of God. There he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall announce Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Ebal-Maloah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazel shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel and all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. And together we say, thanks, thanks be to God. You may be seated. So Elijah was one of the last of God's prophets. And we see here that the wicked king Ahab and his wife Jezebel had hunted down and killed most of his friends. Elijah just had scored a major victory over his enemies, calling fire from heaven. We've heard this story before. And proving that his God was the one true God and he is real. But Elijah is exhausted. You ever been exhausted? Elijah's exhausted. He, he's emotionally drained at this point, And he fell into a depression and he ran to Horeb not to rest up. But what was he doing? He was going to go and give up. He, he was ready and he wanted to die. And our passage today, as we, as we hear this unfolding before us, uh, Elijah wanted to get away and be alone, but we find that God didn't let Elijah go alone. And that's something that I think we as Christians in our life can really celebrate. That, that in our roughest moments, I know there's times, how many of you have ever been caught in a, in a predicament where you're having a rough day and you really just don't want to be bothered? Anybody ever like that? Yeah, we got a few people who are admitting to that. Yeah, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to be around anybody. I just want to be alone. And here we find Elijah's in that same boat. He just wanted to be alone, but God didn't let him be alone. I know there's times where we are so done with people. Elijah, a prophet of God, he was done with people. We did a study on Jonah. Jonah got to the point where what? He was done. He tried to run from God, but that didn't work. Elijah here is done, but God wasn't done. God did three amazing things in this passage. First, he provides in our story, we hear that uh, he lay down under the bush and he fell asleep. And all at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. 
And he looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and he drank. God was providing this nourishment that he needs. Uh, whenever we say a mealtime prayer in my family, we are reminded and we are saying, thanks God for providing nourishment to our family. And then in part, be with those who are without today. It's important that we see that God does provide for our needs. And in our story, he's sitting here providing. Now, I don't know about you. How many of you like fresh baked bread? Yeah. Can you imagine how good that bread tasted? I know we're, it doesn't sound appealing because it's cooked over coals, but in that day, that's how they made bread. But imagine, this is bread from God. That's going to be the best bread ever. Think of how filling, how good, how light and fluffy that bread was. It was probably the best. And he gave him what? Water to drink. He provided what his body needed. And so now Elijah, filled with God, God provided, he found what? Comfort. Well, well, how do we know he found comfort? Well, what did he do? He laid down and what? Fell back to sleep. I don't, how many of you guys can sleep in places where you're not comfortable? How many of you uh, have ever been in like a hotel where the bed was just terrible? Anybody ever sleep on a hotel mattress that's just the worst? And what you thought was going to be this nice, luxurious time of rest and, and comfort, you stay up and you're up every 30 minutes of the night just kind of wandering around the hotel room uh, trying to dwindle the hours of night away. We know that Elijah here was comforted because he was able to rest. But beyond that, he was touched by an angel. And I'm not talking about the TV show. But he was touched by an angel. What a glorious thing happening before Elijah. That God's providing. That God is giving him comfort in his deepest, darkest, most difficult time of life. And he does a third thing and he restores Elijah. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and he ate and he drank Strengthened by that food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. So he's meeting again with the angel of the Lord. And this time, rather than laying down and going to sleep, this was enough nourishment. This was what he needed that was provided for him. He had been comforted and he was now restored to do what? The work and will of God. He got up. And he went, and he traveled 40 days. Must have been really good bread if you can travel for 40 days on that tank. That's good stuff that the Lord's baking. So he gets up, and he gets going. And I'm comforted here to know, as I remind you guys often in the, in the sermons, is that though this was written at a specific time and place for specific people, this also applies to us because this is the living word of God. And God loves all of us the way he loved Elijah. And when we get tired, when we get burnt out, when we get emotionally drained, God provides comfort and he restores. And in that, we kind of start seeing some identifying factors of who God is. And we see God is always doing something and that's pursuing us. How many believe that God pursues you all the time? Even when you're trying to run as far away from God as you possibly can, God is right there still pursuing you. He's not left you. He's not forsaken you. He is right there with you. And I want to encourage you guys. That is part of your testimony, by the way, it is the pursuit of God in your life, especially if you were running the other direction. That's part of your testimony. And that's a powerful witness to people around you. Because there are people around you who are running as far and fast as they can to run from God. And I want to encourage you to share that story with them. Well, another thing we see here is that God is very loving. 
That, that pursuit that God has for you in itself is evident of God's love. Turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you. God loves you. That's the evidence in that pursuit that we see happening here. Reminder that love is the root of our understanding of who God is. Uh, we talked about sincerity last week. This love is sincere. It's true. It's bold. How many of you are parents out there? Yeah. How many of you love your children? No, don't answer that question. <laughs> As a parent, I, uh, one thing I realize that I do a lot is I have to watch after my kiddos. That uh, it is sometimes exhausting, it's time consuming, it drains your brain all the time. We're having to figure out. Yesterday at the frolic, I thought it was very comical. There was a family there and uh, they, they had the tags for the tractor pole on their back. So they had numbers, and Kim made the comment, they have to number all their children? And so it's a good way. You make sure, just count all the numbers, make sure they're all there. But uh, we, we watch our children because we care for our children. And in our passage today, verse 13, when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak. What did he hear? Was, it, was, was the Lord in the fire? What about the earthquake? What about the wind? The whisper. Good answer, Kim. Kim, I was trying to get there. You, you're, you're going too fast. Slow down. But yeah, he wasn't in all those other things, but God was in the whisper. Meaning God was there. God was watching. God was waiting. So when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And the voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And I want to remind you, not only is God watching you, but he's calling you out by name. He's calling you out by name, Ken, and Sharon, and Kenny, and Cindy. He's calling you by name. Why? Because you're his child. He's watching you, he's loving you, and he's pursuing you. So where do we find Jesus? Another place we find Jesus is in the elements of communion. And so I want to invite Pastor Carol and Pastor Mark, if they would come and get ready to serve. And uh, we're going to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. It's uh, first Sunday, which is Family Sunday. And so we like to gather at the family table of Christ, where we share together in Holy Communion. And so if you're in the middle section of the sanctuary in just a moment, I'll have you come down the center aisle, receive the elements, and then go back around and back into your seats. Same thing for our sides. You'll just come down your center aisle. You'll be served there and there. And so, uh, Pastor Mark and Pastor Carol, if you'll start getting the trays ready, and I'll join you down there. Nita, would you mind coming and playing? As she's coming up here, I want to say how much I appreciate our people who serve on Sundays. It's easy for us to sit and enjoy our time of worship, but we need to be reminded that there's people who are sacrificing their time and sitting up in the sound booth or at computers or at the keyboard and and they don't get to enjoy the full element of worship so um, share appreciation for them today if you can as we get ready to share communion
that was made for this meal for the sacrifice of Christ Jesus that this was done as an act of love that we can once again come before the Lord forgiven by the blood of Christ and so thank you for this gift thank you for this meal thank you for this reminder might we go about this day this week this month thinking on these elements and thinking on how you have given and given and given. You've pursued us, you've loved us, and you continue to watch over us. Though the world will distract us, help us keep our focus on you. We love you, Heavenly Father. Together, God's church says, amen. I want to invite the praise team to come up as we share in our response song this morning.
Church, it's been such a great time being with you this morning in this time of worship. If you'd stand as we receive the benediction and go from this place. As the song reminds us, we're going to shout north and south. We're going to sing east and west. And Pastor Johnny's going to come give a word now. Would you give me just the opportunity here? The Lord's been speaking to my heart throughout the course of the service here. Well, let's get you a mic. We got a quick testimony here. There's never... Never not time for a testimony and a word. It's, it's a call is what it is. And as we've had communion here today, and we're here as the body of Christ. And I don't know how long our doors project has been going on, but as long as Becky and I have been here, we've been working on this doors project. And I know that our kids are important to us. And I didn't hear a final number. I heard the amount that you told me we brought in, but it, seems like there's about $3,000 more that we need. And my calculating mind works like 60 of us, $50 a piece to take care of that, and we'd have the project done. My calculating mind also knows that the prices of products just keep going up, yeah. that the longer we wait, the more it's going to take. 30 of us, $100 a piece, would take care of it as well. And so if you have a calculator, you can run through your mind and, and see what it would take. Yeah. But I'd like to see this project taken care of next Sunday. Just just bring, bring the money <laughs> and have it done. And, and I believe the Lord will help us to do it. His name would be glorified. And, yeah. and we as a church would, would feel like we, we've done our part for the Lord. So. Thanks for that. I, I know that I've minded God. Yeah. There you go. Well, you got to be obedient. And uh, sometimes it's easier to hear that from someone else than the pastor telling you to bring that, that in. So let's be obedient. Pray and see what the Lord puts on your heart to give this week. And uh, let's work to do that for this Sunday. What a good challenge for us this week. So um, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine on you. We've gathered. We've grown. 